What's up everybody, Just right here, welcome back to another castle, Lord of the Rings of Battle from Miller 2, patch 1.09. And today we have a 1v1 on the Old Forest. You're probably wondering, the Old Forest? What? This is a match from the alternate map tournament that happened a bit ago in 1.09, so... There's some, uh, some games that were played on 1v1 maps that were not Ford Supplies 2, so I'm all for it. And there's quite a few of them that weren't actually casted or anything. They are probably all streamed, I'd imagine. Maybe? I'll buy Yoda at some point. But there's no, like, replay cast of it, as far as I can tell, so... I'll do a few of them, maybe? Because I'm all for, uh, seeing some uh, action on some maps that are not. Fords of Isen, Fords of Anduin, etc. So, it could be cool. Doesn't mean it's a good game or anything, but we'll see, I guess. We have Recon Howitt as the Isengard player in the bottom right. If I remember correctly, he's pretty good. And we have Turgon as Goblins in the top left. And he's also... Pretty good, turns out. I guess that's why they're in a tournament. I don't know what round this is or whatever. I didn't actually... It doesn't really matter. I'm not going to be casting them in order. I'm not going to be casting the whole tournament. Nothing like that, of course. I'm just doing a few games here and there from the tournament because it's got a selection of replays to cast, you know? So why not? Alright, we have Goblin Warriors coming out for Turgon. And for Hallet, we have Rook Pikeman. So Rick Pikeman obviously not going to be the prime choice for Goblin Warrior attack, but they will be good for creeping if that's what he so desires. We have a signal fire in the top right and in the bottom left, guarded by Bear Whites. We have a couple of Spiderling... Uh, what are they called? Spider Layers. That's what they're called. In the centers. Old Forest is actually a pretty cool map, I think. And indeed, he has got these to creep the, the uh, Spiderlings there. They seem to be struggling. And you have, of course, three entrances into the opponent's base. One in the center and two on the sides. I think it's a pretty balanced 1v1 map, honestly. So I'm all for seeing a match on it. It's a bit dark, of course, but I can see just fine. So I'm sure everyone else can. All right. We have Contact. Hallett putting his guys into Porcupine Formation. So his crossbows can get in position to bring down these goblin warriors before he loses his pikes. He should be able to do just that, I think. Because the goblin warriors are dropping like flies. Although more goblin warriors are on the way. And Turkon throwing down a third goblin cave. So he's going to keep the goblin spam all really pumping out there. He's also keeping his forward tunnels on the other side of the map as well. In the bottom left. It's got a very similar style to uh, Fords of Eisen. It's gotta be said. You have this like cinder kind of barrier. It's not really a barrier though. I mean, it is a barrier actually. It's physically a barrier. <laughs> kind of like Fords of Anduin, where you can't cross the river parts except for the shallow parts. So if you think about it, it's very similar to uh, Fords of Eisen in a lot of ways. But there's no inn, so there's signal fires. Instead of cave trolls, you have barrel whites. Instead of war layers, you have spider hole things, spider layers. And you got this cool forest, which is pretty neat as well. It's got a, got a creepy ambiance to it. Alright, so how it is making his way in. Sounds like he did just use vision of the Palantir. He did indeed. That's the reason you can see the Goblin base, and of course that does give you a temporary 15% speed bonus to units in the target area as well. Which is kind of neat. Alright. I don't think he's going to have enough to overwhelm the Goblins though. And Jorgon doing a nice job of microing his troops around the other guys to go straight for the crossbows. The crossbows are the ones doing all the damage. Those are the ones you want to bring down quickest. I gotta say, I really like this blue that I'm putting on uses. Such a royal blue. It's very cool. It stands up nicely. Let's just put it that way. But it looks like goblins are successful in their defense. He's also on the attack, it seems. Some crossbows are defending the base there for Hallet. He's also going for war Riders. Definitely a good choice against goblins. Warriors in Beef Me 2 are quite effective at trampling and doing damage to buildings, so they're a great unit. 
Alright, we have four goblin caves now. The goblin cave is real. So we can bringing them out quite severely. Oh, this builder is actually gonna die to four goblin warriors. Feels bad, man. Even if he doesn't get him the poison will. There it goes. They did their duty for their country. Rip. Never forget. I've already forgotten. But it was pretty nice. Alright. We got warriors out in the field now. We have crossbows, we have Urukai swords, we have pikemen. So he's got a little variety there, a little bit of everything. Looks like Turgon trying to sneak some, uh, some Goblin Warriors past ye old spider layer there. Continue to get more, more and more goblins. If you look at the mini map right now, it's very heavily covered in blue. There's Goblin Warriors all over the place. And by all over the place, I mean three locations, but still, that means he's microing three different areas. Except for these ones, I guess. There they go. That's truly how you become the best, in my opinion. Just learn how to attack from multiple fronts at once. It definitely helps. That can be said for any RTS, really. I think. Pretty solid uh, thing to say. If you're more like me and you just hit Q and then attack move your whole army, <laughs> that's never going to get you too far as far as uh, being good at the game goes. But a lot of players, of course, they'll group the bottom left guys as group one, and then top right guys as group two, and then the middle is group three, and then just like send them in different attack formations and orders and whatnot. That's how you actually play the game properly. It does, does actually show, and it helps. I'm not saying he's doing that, but I mean, he could just be box dragging over his units, sending him in. Going somewhere else, box dragging, sending him in. But it looks like there's a bit of micro going on. Obviously. As expected from good players, I suppose. I think Guard's going to have a bit of trouble actually going in the offensive, I think, with the amount of goblin spam that, uh,. Turgon's putting out here. He is able to fend them off fairly well. But also, there's just that little glob of Goblin Warriors has actually done a lot of damage to Hallett's furnace there, so. This is probably what he needs more war Riders, I think. If he gets enough war Riders, what can Goblin Warriors do against such reckless warg? The answer? I don't know. We'll see. Oh, he's thrown up a cheeky little spider pit in the back left over here. I didn't see that, so now he has a couple of battalions of spider riders. That could swing things in the goblin favor quite substantially. I guess we'll find out. Assuming he can avoid some pikemen, which doesn't seem like there is any here, so that's gonna hurt. And the crossbows have been trampled. Poor guys are great, but they can only do so much. <laughs> He does have the Hell ability, which is 65% damage, but lose 15% armor against pikes and structural. Interesting. I didn't actually know that was different. Okay. So they get a 65% damage buff, but they lose 15% armor against pikes and the structural, which is the fortress or arrow towers or whatever. So any weapons that come from a structure, as you might expect from that description. We have a summon wildman. He's gonna try and bring down the spider pit. It's definitely a good thing to try and focus down. Because the spider riders will be quite the nuisance for Isengard. He needs to shut that down ASAP. Hallet knows this. He's well aware. Fortunately, his crossbows were out of position for the pikeman, though. He trampled pretty severely. I think Hallet's in a bit of trouble now. The we will swarm over them tactic seems to be working pretty nicely. Goblins are infesting this land. There's the Tan land in the base of Hallet now. And he's destroyed the work bits. Oh dear. And this, of course, highlights the downside of this uh, fortress cover thing. It's cool looking, but it doesn't actually show you the tainted ground over it. I wish 
tainted land powers and such, land powers would overwrite the fortress covers. Then these would be very, very cool. At all times. But obviously, if you're playing competitively, you probably don't want these fortress covers on because you won't to see the for <laughs> you wouldn't see the tainted land if it was casted around your fortress, like legit. Because it'd be covered by your fortress floor cover. If there was a way to make it overwrite that, I think that would be a much much better way of doing it. But at least it's an optionable feature, you know. Did I say optionable? That's that's not a thing. Optional. <laughs> Is optionable a thing? Probably not. Sounds dumb as hell. Maybe it is. Alright, we got a couple of battalions of war riders. You better enjoy him because his war pit is completely toast. He's also probably not doing too well on an economy front as well. Recon Hallet is sitting at 200 to 550. Oh, he's doing alright on power points. He's got himself 20 power points in the bank. He's also got, of course, the vision of bounty in this summon Lawan. Actually, he's doing better on the power point. Uh, command point front the uh, Turgon is currently, but Turgon has scavenger to make up for it. Yes, so let's land and three power points in the bank. Three hundred nine of five hundred. But it does seem that how it is ahead on the power point front and in the amount of max amount of farms there. There's Gorko running for his life from Lurts. Lurts is probably going to die some Goblin warriors. I would expect. There's no way he's getting out of there. And that nets him a nice 330 resources for killing Lurts. Worth every penny. These work riders are level 7. So, of course, units go up to level 10. Unit 109, which is neat. Also, he's got the excavations on his fortress, which does heal units around it. As you see there. Not a feature I'm fond of for evil teams. I have said it many times, but, you know. I'll keep saying it, because <laughs> I hate it. Why is this a thing? Who knows? Alright, we have spider riders being brought in and goblin warriors on the offensive as well. Looks like he's, Tarkon's bringing more over there as also. Keeping the spider riders separate to go attack some farms while he keeps his bulk of his goblin warriors just swarming over there. Poison blades in hand. So much death. Oh, um, the spider has got a nice trample through as well. Turgon's definitely on the back foot here. Not Turgon, uh, Hallet. Turgon is definitely on the front foot? I guess if you're not on the back foot, you're on the front foot, right? If you're on the side foot. With feet on their sides. That's madness. Looks like the builder's gonna get killed down there, you know? Oh, he threw up a wall hub just in the nick of time. Lucky. Because I'd imagine he was just about to die. Very close. Well, I mean, I like the excavations thing, but at least I like the blue particle effect that's thrown off. Kind of neat. Of course, that is synonymous with healing, so I guess that's fair enough, but... Old Lurts 3. Not a useful level. He does have his carnage if he switched to his sword. But what he really wants is the 50% damage buff. So he can start getting some super, super good damage in there. Gorkill is level 4, so he's giving his 25% armor to his goblins, which... I mean, let's be honest. 25% armor to goblin warriors isn't very huge. They still die like little nerds, so it's not super useful. It's more useful for things like half tron marauders, I'd say. I mean, it's still useful, don't get me wrong. 25% armor will actually help a couple more to survive a bit more, but they're not gonna be, they're not gonna be guardian tanking anything anytime soon, even with that little defensive buff. How it's going on the offensive here? I don't think he has enough though. He's thrown down the devastation to stun the enemy. Also netting him a little bit of trees as well, and summoning the wildmen in there. So what turned into what might have been a slaughter for Isengard it seems to be working out quite well in his favor. And so Lurts and the Wildmen. Ooh, Lurts almost got Gorkil. Turk on getting Gorkil away though. 
Once again, Gorkil's a slippery little bastard. And now there's just a huge horde of goblins on the on the tail where it's where it needs to run for his life. Looks like a spider layer's gonna creep there, some treasure lies awaiting. Yeah, Turgon seems to be doing pretty wide side. Turgon is definitely winning the match. But Hallet is putting up quite a fight, and he's doing pretty well, I'd say. Considering how many units the enemy is bringing out against him, he's doing pretty nice. And he's able to keep bringing back a lot of units, keep healing them up as well, which is good. Ah, oh, there's the Watcher Summon right in the middle of the enemy army. One whip from a hentai tentacle monster, and a lot of Goblin Warriors die. Oh, sounds like Gorkil's finally fallen as well. Not so lucky this time, is he? Chargon microing his way around the Watcher, though. He's got three battalions of half drone Marauders in there. A battalion of Spider Riders and a lot of Goblin Warriors, three or so. Throwing on the Tainted Land, summons the Worm. This could be very bad for Hallet. Guess we'll find out soon enough. The Worm, of course, will do a lot of damage by itself. So we can just, just say, I'm going to target the fort or something. I wonder if it has an AI built in to not target the fortress, like, first. Unless there's, like, nothing else. It's hard to say. It has a mind of its own, really, doesn't it? I hate the worm. I hate and love the worm, as I hate and love myself. But it's incredibly good in 1.9. It one shots most heroes. One shots level four. one farms, level two farms probably as well, I'd imagine. It's just very powerful. You don't want to fight near the worm if you can help it. Uh, but shutting these level 3 farms down for uh, Hallet is going to be crippling, basically. Hallet does not have the economy to have his farms destroyed like this. And as you see here, Turgon does. And he's also getting money for kills, which is incredibly beneficial to him as well. Why is this... Oh, Lurtz is there. I was gonna say, I don't see Lurtz, but he's getting money for kills. Lurtz is there. Hallet is trying one... Maybe last offensive. Although he's actually throwing some arrow towers that should defend his fortress from attack here. Long enough for him to uh, keep doing his thing over here, but I think he will be overwhelmed by the sheer amount of goblins that Turgon's bringing out. Look at this crap. This is how you play goblins. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a thing of beauty. I do love goblins. They are one of my favorite factions, I could say. Behind Mordor. I do... I do appreciate the goblins. I think goblins actually might be my third favorite faction, because I do like the Men of the West actually second best. But I would, I would venture to say they're my third favorite. They're pretty good. They're very akin to the Zerg in StarCraft. They're just... You have mass units. They're not very good, like Zerglings. Basically, God Warriors are Zerglings, let's be honest. <laughs> That's basically what they are. And you have your Roaches, which are your Half-Trolls. It's, of course, not at all. Or Hydra Lisks. Of course, they're not ranged units, but... I'm going way off topic. What the fuck am I even talking about? Who knows? I ask myself that question a lot. Alright, Turgon's bringing in quite the army. Will it be enough to crush Hallet? Maybe not right away, but I think eventually, yes. Uh, you should really cripple strike Gorkil. Or not. <laughs> he could have... He could have kept Gorkil away from the fort. Or kept him in the arrow tower range. That would have been good too. Maybe he didn't see him though. Who knows? I can imagine it'd be easy to get lost in the, uh, the sea of goblins there. But Turgon is attacking from the south and the north. And this has got to be incredibly difficult to defend against with basically no units except for Lurts. <laughs> so I don't fancy his chances. In fact, this might be the end. All that Recon Hallet really has is Lurts. He was fighting valiantly, and these really high-level war riders, level 10. 
These war graders have been doing the Lord's work, it's gotta be said. Whoever that Lord is. And they also have armor and weapon upgrades. Well, I'm assuming they have armor upgrades. How did you get armor and weapon upgrades? Oh. I was gonna say, I don't I never even saw a forge. Because it's nicely tucked away in the back corner there. Explains why it's still alive, I guess. That'd be kind of cool if a unit got to level 10. They got these for free. That'd be kind of a neat feature. Not necessary, of course. You already get buffs for getting leveled up, so it's not like that's a necessary, necessary thing. But it'd be kind of cool at the same time. I wouldn't hate it. Do these have self-healing at this point? They do look like they're healing, doesn't it? That blue glow is them healing. Or as it should be. These spider riders might actually take them down, though. Do decent damage in bow mode. Gore kills also on the attack there. Once again, it doesn't look like Hallett's Fort has taken the final blow. I can't actually select the damn thing. <laughs> is it really there? Usually you can at least drag over it and get it, but I can't even do that. Okay. I guess we'll assume it's just, like, a little bit damaged. Because I can't select it whatsoever. Hal's putting up a good fight, but I, I don't see him being coming victorious in this match. Looks like a little bit of damage was done to the base of Turgon, though. That I must have missed from what, I wonder. A dragon strike? I didn't hear no dragon! How did I miss that? Son of a bitch. Usually when a big power goes off, you hear it, but I didn't I didn't hear it. Unfortunate. Okay, well that explains why his base is in a bit of ruin. If Hallett does have one thing on his, in his side, it is actually power points, because he's been killing a lot of goblins. He does have a lot of power points. But, is that going to be enough? Oh no, he's led him to his forge. And Turgon is going to take full advantage of the fact that this is nowhere near the fortress. He's also thrown up the Tain Land to boot, because why not? Tain Land is just armor buff in 1.9, I believe. Double armor, yes indeed. So Core kills there as well. He's level 6 now. He can actually mount his scorpion and do his poison sting if he so desired. Which could be good against Lurts, actually. I mean, I would. I wonder, if Lurks went into Carnage mode and went up to you and attacked you, if you got in your Scorpion and Poison stung him, would he just stop Carnaging you? I guess he would for six seconds, wouldn't he? I think Turgon should have put him on his, on his mighty steed. Might have saved his life. Probably not, though. <laughs> Let's be real. Unless he preemptively stuck him and then ran away. There is the worm summon once again. Baratar is trying to bring him down, unfortunately. He's losing a lot of buildings once again. Thurgon just doesn't have the force. Isengard troops are powerful, but they're not. They're just not enough. There's not enough of them. The Goblin Menace is too much. But even small amounts of uh, Isengard troops are holding very nicely. He actually got these away again. These level 10 war graders. I thought they were going to die, but they actually got away. This has to bring out more war graders now. It's going to be very, very careful with those. But the war graders are doing, doing good. Very good. I think war graders are really the key to shutting down the goblins if you're Isengard. Obviously, you have to worry about the half drone marauders, but if you can deal with those, I think the are just. they're marvelous at what they do. You know, it'd really help a goblin player here? A Drogoth. <laughs> Is it necessary? No. But would that shut down Isengard completely? Absolutely. Also, it's extremely expensive, as you might expect, so. And Turgon is spending his money quite frivolously, keeping his uh, income down. That's why he has so many troops on the field at all times. His macro is on points. He's got a lot 
Lots pumping out as he can. There's the freezing rain. Just as the goblin player attacks, that's not ideal for him. But he has countered with darkness, which has gotten rid of the freezing rain. Although it doesn't... It doesn't look like a goblin army's buffed. Unless that's that, what that uh, shiny shit is. Perhaps. <laughs> Lots of different buffs and debuffs going on right now. With the Creebine just debuffing the army. There's a Gorkill gore totem in there somewhere buffing the army. There it is. Of course that doesn't... I don't know the range of the buff on 1.9. I'm assuming it's just this. That's what it's supposed to be. I don't know if 1.9 changed that or not. It's possible. It's changed a lot of things that you wouldn't have expected. So who knows? Ooh, Lurch is very close to death. This is all 8 though. He's gone to Bomo to try and take out some stuff. Why is he not cripple striking Gorkill? <laughs> Come on! There you go. Now is your time. Finish him. Or not. Or kill his toast. Very nice. And that helps him. About 500 resources as well. Nice little pickup there. Oh, we got cave trolls being utilized now. That's definitely a good addition to the goblin ar ar arsenal. Well, that is a very wounded cave troll, let's go his head. Down he goes. He's gone into a rage. And he has fallen. There's the big old watcher summon killing off the goblin army from Turgon once again. Shutting the majority of that down. Al is holding out quite nicely. Just, he can't go on the offensive enough to win the game, I think. And now it looks like Mountain Giants are being brought out from Turgon, so that's probably going to end the match there once he gets the Giants over there. I would expect. He's just got goblins pouring out at all times. Which is a beautiful sight to see indeed. Yeah, that shiny uh, effect must be the darkness effect. I thought that was a horde bonus or something. Or maybe it is. But those guys were getting it and they weren't near him, so who knows. Yeah, that's definitely the darkness buff. Different uh, different leaderships and buffs have different uh, effects now, so who knows. Well, there we go. Abrupt ending. I'm assuming Hallet lost that game. In fact, I know Hallet lost that game, so. <laughs> well played, Turgon. It was, a, it was a pretty harsh match for Isengard, it's gotta be said. Throwing up against so many goblin warriors and other things. Turgon did a good job keeping up his, uh, his spam, so it was really good. So yeah, that's one of those games from the alternate map tournament. I'll do it. I'll be doing more probably, just because I like seeing uh, matches on different maps. So should be good. So look forward to that in the future. And until then, I will see you guys next time.